Oh, that was beautiful. Thank you so much for that beautiful, beautiful song. Um, without further ado, I just wanted to uh, say welcome to those that are just coming on. Um, all, um, but we're in for an exciting time today. And I uh, just wanted to introduce now our speaker for this morning session. And it's a beautiful lady and her name is Shanique. And I just want to say, Shanique, we are just excited for what God's doing in your life. And we, are, we anticipate a real move of God here this morning. So with, I want you to give her a big, God bless you, a big hearty welcome as she comes. Shanique, welcome. Over to you, God bless you. Welcome, Shanique. Welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome, Shanique. Welcome. Welcome, sister. Yeah. Good morning, good morning, good morning. <clears throat> can you hear me? We can now, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know if I need to talk about that. <laughs> um, good morning, everyone. To God be the glory. The Amen. He has done, still doing, is about to do in the name of Jesus. Um, Amen. I just want to say um, thank you to everyone who has joined. And um, I pray that. What God has laid on my heart will be a blessing to everyone, including myself. Um, I think I'm going to turn this camera off. Um, yeah. Oh, for today, <clears throat> before I go into anything else, I'll just pray <clears throat> and ask God for His grace and mercy to reside in me, with me. And as I deliver in the word that he has made of my heart, that someone will be blessed, someone will be transformed, someone will be renewed, not by their own power, but because of his grace and mercy and their honesty and transparency. Lord, I pray, my God, that your spirit abide in me, mighty God. Let me, my God, not speak of my flesh, mighty God, but my God, speak what you have laid in my heart to speak. And Lord, as even though I've prepared some things that you've given to me, my God, Lord, I pray, my God, that whatever you need me to change, my God, let me, my God, be able to, my God, be open to your changes in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I give you thanks and I give you praise. I pray for everyone on this platform tonight, this morning, my God, you bless their heart. Lord, let them be able to receive your word, <clears throat> not only to hear it, mighty God, but to be able to, my God, feed upon it, mighty God, and to be nourished unto their body and to their soul. And they're able to, my God, see changes, experience change in their life in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> uh, so again, good morning, everyone. If by any chance you can't hear me, let me know so I can adjust. Um, I have a topic, <laughs> but um, I hope it's in line with what I'm saying. But I have a few stuff I want to say. So <clears throat> what God said to me the other day was, <clears throat> sorry, do you know who you are and to whom you belong? And um, it's been a while that he's been telling me a change of mind. Change of mindset, I think I've spoken about that before, but it's, 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 it's a constant thing that I think he keeps reminding me about it. And um, for me, whenever God says something, even if it's for others, I always take it unto myself because even the teacher needs to be taught. And um, I believe that when God gives me words for others, he's speaking to me as well. So speaking to you today is not speaking at you, but speaking to us, basically. So um, <clears throat> I wanted to look at Psalms 119. 10 to 11. Um, <laughs> I've caught this, um, I think I've heard this scripture and I went to research it and it has laid certain things on my heart. And as I always said before, we will read a scripture 
hundred different times and there's always a revelation or a different revelation. But it comes back down to your mindset and where you are. Because if we are at a place where, you know, whether we want to play, be victimized, whether you want to play, you know, be stubborn, whatever it is, we fail to receive the word. We, re we fail to receive that revelation that is needed at the time. We try to apply it <laughs> to what we are going through at the moment. And um, but as I said, we, because we're all guilty of it, including myself. We hear something, we get a word from God, whether it's through it in the Bible, whether someone gives us a word, but yet we, because at the time we don't really want to hear that or we're not ready for it, <clears throat> we kind of ignore it. And then we think, you know, God, where are you? I ask you for, I ask you for a word. I've been asking for help, but we can't see it. And that's because we fail to receive it. And uh, um, the Psalms 119, 10 to 11 say, with my whole heart have I sought thee, O oh, let me not wander from thy commandment. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And um, I've, I've read it. I think I've made some notes. And then this morning, while I was trying to prepare myself to, to come on Zoom, God started to speak to me about the scripture again. And he highlighted me like of of all the 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 writers or the prophets of the of of the time, it was David David who said this one, and um he started to download some stuff in me about why he mentioned like why he revealed to me David, and for me being honest, like I've heard it before, you quote it, people say it, but yeah, it it has never come to mind that it was from David. It was from Psalms like. It's David who said it. And the reason I'm, I'm, I'm emphasizing on that because we all know who David is and what he gave. And um, if we should be honest, we could say that David David wasn't no saint, you know? He wasn't no saint, but <clears throat> God said he's a man of his own heart. And um, as human, and from us, we'd be like, if we know David's character, we've got friends like David, we would be judging them to say they would never go heaven. You know, God don't know them because, you know, he's doing sinful stuff or he's wicked or whatever, as we know the story of David. And, um, but <clears throat> I think what God wanted me to, to realize when he said to me, of all the person, it's David who said it, and you know David's story, it's because it's showing us that despite what David do, the big, the big things that we look at all the time and think, you know, it is bad and it is wrong. But God still see him as a man of his own heart. And we could ask ourselves, why is that? You know? And it's it's merely because he was humble. He was, I could say, transparent. He was honest. And um he lacked, not say he doesn't have pride, but he 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 wasn't proud. He wasn't a proud man in the sense where when it comes down to God. I'm talking about him and God right now. And um, even when, if it should, like, you know, when we say David dance, when we say David strip himself and run to the, the temple and stuff to repent, he, he, imagine being naked in front of everyone, running up and down in the street. People say we are mad and all this stuff. But he wanted to show God, like, I, I, I surrender, basically. And um, as I said, what God showed to me was that we need to be more honest be more accountable for what we have done, what we are doing, be humble, you know, and somewhat get rid of pride. You know, God hit a proud man. And um, he wasn't afraid to say, Lord, I have sinned and I've come short of your glory. He was honest to God. And a lot of us is not so honest. <laughs> you know, we tend to believe that I'm so perfect. I've been baptized for years. I've been in church for this amount. I've been doing this ministry for how many years? But yet still, we, 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 we fail to accept that we've come short. You know, we've sinned. We think we have no sin. A lot of us think we're perfect, you know. And um, <clears throat> as I always said to my best friend, that we put weight on sin. And, <laughs> and she said to me, you know, you're doing the same thing that they do. And I said, if we should judge sin by size, I would think the biggest sin is, some, is the sin that you do in your heart 
or to hinder people from serving God. You know, but again, as, as the weight, sin have no weight, sin is sin, you know. But with David, he was able to go to God. That's what I think that was trying to say to me. And what he wants me to say to you and to us is that he was able to go to God transparent, be honest, yeah. and said, I am I have sinned and come short. I am no good, you know. God forgive me, I've done this. A lot of us don't ask forgiveness for stuff because we think we're not doing anything wrong, especially because we don't think we're doing the sexual immorality. We are doing the quote unquote big sins, you know, that we put labeled on. And um, so we feel like we're not sinning. And we sin so much against God by one. Sometimes we're so selfish. We're sinning. Because selfishness harbors a whole lot of other stuff. You, you tend to be proud because you're selfish. You tend to sometimes, in somewhat way, tell lies. You tend to, you know, put others beneath you or put them to the back. Again, put yourself forward in front of everything you don't think about another person need and that doesn't show humility and love and again which is the main thing about god god is love so i think that's what, what like i need a plan to start there i'm gonna go back <laughs> but i think that's what he laid on my heart this morning that and i went to bed after three this morning and whilst i was in the kitchen he reminded me of david david right in the scripture and um it was david who made that speech and it, it really dawned on me, like, wow, I, did, I didn't even know that. You know, you, we, we quote these scriptures all the time, but we really sometimes don't even get a revelation or the depth of what God is trying to say to us. Again, we take out what we want to take from it. And we are all guilty of it. You know, we are all guilty of it at some point of our life. But what God is trying to say to us is, you know, we've, we, 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 we've seen and we've come short of his glory. And it doesn't matter how, it is, how small, how petty, how, you know, maybe not important it is to God, or maybe because other person goes to the sin, you think it's nothing. But the mere fact that we even disobey God and, and allow our flesh to win all the time, that's a sin. We need to repent. And a lot of us is not very is not so much repentance repentance. We don't practice to repent often because again we maybe think we're perfect or because we didn't think it's something to repent about. And that is come back down to knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. What you don't know, you basically can't do. But once you know it, it is very vital that we do the right thing. And we, we, we sometimes become guilty of doing presumptuous sin because we know about, we know it's not right. When we don't know about, as I said, it's, it's not that it's okay, but we didn't know. You didn't know the impact, the effect, or that it's even so much wrong, if that makes sense. But once we know about it and we constantly, constantly, constantly doing it, it's a presumptuous sin. I would say, oh God, you know, we, 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 we tend to do this thing, we repeat, you know, God, God, grace and mercy keep me and God, grace is sufficient to keep me from falling. Again, I'm guilty of those stuff. But growth is vital. Again, knowledge is power. And it is, once you have that knowledge, you will grow. You know, you, you won't be the same. You won't be doing the same childish thing because you know better. You're, you, you move to another level. And then, and then by moving to another level, it shows growth. And where there's growth, there's, should I say, success, if that's the right word to use to describe it. But in, in all aspects, growth is important and having knowledge. Um, let me go to where I first started from. <laughs> where my notes first start, where I start my notes from. So I've read Psalms 119, 10 to 11. And um. What I have on my notes was this does not only mean to me to be able to um, quote it. So as I said, I'll have to quote these scriptures. You can tell you the scriptures, where it comes from, who writes it, what time it was written, all of these stuff. But we still cannot find the revelation. We quote these stuff because we know them. But it means that we shall, we shall and should live it. Makes you, such us and me, live a life free from sin. And pleasing to God. So when he said, Thy word have I hidden in my heart, so I may not sin against thee. It's it's <laughs> it's it's where not only just being able to hear the word, quote the word, quote it over and over, tell us where scriptures the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation. A lot of us read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation more than once, but if we should honestly say We've, we, we've experienced what some of these scriptures are talking about. We fully get a revelation 
of what the scripture is talking about, we wouldn't be so easy to sin. And I said, we, because I am guilty of it. Before I would do, I would do stuff, I would say certain stuff, certain things. But when I realized the impact, and as I said, as, as you grow spiritually, you realize, oh, it's not pleasing to God. Uh, God is not going to be happy. And um, I always say this, whenever I think about doing certain things that is, that is not pleasing to God, or as I said, presumptuous sin, and, and giving into temptation, I feel like the devil goes to God and just, you know, jeering him like, look, you see, um, she give in. And because it, it's like when you give, when you tell the devil that you can do what you want to do to Joe, but don't kill him, you give him the authority, uh, the okay to tempt us sometimes, you know, to do what he wants to do. But there's a, there's a limit to where, how far you can go. And I think, like, looking at it, and as I, from my experience, I feel like God is saying, I, I know what's in you. I see where you are. I see where I want you to go. I know where I have you to go. And, you know, you can see the growth and the change, just like with our kids, we realize, oh, they're big enough now, are they doing things? We can, we can give them, change our, their food textures. We, we, we can play, play with them a different way. We hold them a different way. A newborn will hold their back and their head as, they, as, as we carry them. But as they get a bit older and get a bit more strength, we tend to not hold their head and their back that much, right? And it's the same with us. Like, they'll be like, okay, she's, you know, she's come that level. He's come that far. He's like, okay, go on, let me see what you're going to do. And then there comes we, we give in to the temptation. We give in to the test and the trial. And then the devil go back to better like Jerry, you know. And that's the image I have in my head. So whenever the, I feel the urge to do something wrong and my flesh is telling me to give in and to just, uh, I, I think about, oh, how is God going to feel? Am I, you know, am I embarrassing God? And that's what I use to try to keep me from doing certain things. Or should I say presumptuous sin? And, um, I hope you can use it. Find find something that is able to help you to not sin against God. That's the long and short of what I'm trying to say. Again, it's not easy. It is not easy. It's not easy to do good or to be good. It's not easy to be a real Christian, a Christian that, that like, as I said, to live the life of the scriptures. We all said it, the Bible is a manual of life, of how to live and to live a sinless life. And um, as I said, it's not easy, but it's possible am i making sense mm -hmm. oh yeah it is possible to, to 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 live a sinless life in the sense where we, we our, our mind straight so we, this is why we can ask forgiveness but the presumptuous sin i think i'm trying to emphasize the presumptuous sin because we read the word we know what the scripture said what we shouldn't do or what we should do but yet we still do it like again i'm guilty of it you know like he said, be anxious for nothing, but in prayer and supplication, make your request be known. And um, for me, I've said it before, and who did, who's on here as my friend that didn't know, he's going to know now. I suffer with anxiety and depression. And um, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's funny, like, before I start to grow spiritually or be more mature, <laughs> um, I, I suffered with it. I get so anxious and, you know, as I said, that whole spirit of offense, the spirit of this, the spirit of that, because again, it breeds, it's not only one spirit that comes from all these stuff, it's more than one. It's like, so, but for me, it's that, like the more I, 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 I know the word and I realize what God is saying, and I'm like, oh, I try to apply it. So yeah, even though those anxiousness will come onto me and I feel like, like, as I said before, when I just have give birth, I struggle with postnatal depression and didn't know what it was. I, again, I was in denial because you think, you know, being Jamaican or whatever, being black, full stop, is like you can't. How dare you talk about depression? And you know what I mean. So mm -hmm. it was a, it's like a, it, it was a thing you shouldn't say or shouldn't do, and a lot of us suffer with it. And if you don't expose it and get help for it, it gets worse, right? And um, I used to fear dying leaving my son I think every mother have that problem but because I was alone and I feel like I used to I'd be afraid of closing my door think oh I'm gonna die I would be in front of people talking but whilst I'm talking to them and stuff you know around people I'm literally planning my death I'm planning my funeral as I should say like you know what will happen to my funeral how would my mom feel if I'm not there what's gonna happen to my son like and I used to get so anxious and I feel suffocated but as I said the more I get help physically and spiritually, 
and I feed on the word. And then I, I, I started to use the scriptures as, as a, a form of affirmation in a sense, but a form of encouragement to help me, to pull me out. It wasn't easy because you're, you're the human part of you and then you're living in a specific situation. You're there. But at the same time, the, the word that I hid it in my heart mm, so I won't know. sin. Not mm. only sin because I'm doing sinful stuff, but I'm sinning because I wasn't doing anything like quote unquote doing the sex, doing the this at that time. But I was sinning against God because I was being anxious. I was taking the power away from him. I was trying to do things in my own mind, my own power. And it makes me so exhausted. So like it it is it is vital to just let go and let God allow God to work for us. And um and I can say that because I know what it is like to be or to do the other thing. And don't get it twisted. Even though I'm speaking now, the enemy is going to come up with certain things to try to break me again or to try to keep me off my feet. But again, the word have I hidden in my heart when I sin against God. So when the enemy come and tell me certain things, I used to just counter against that. Listen, I shall not die, but live to declare the word of the Lord. I can't tell you what scripture it is from, what verse, what chapter, but I know the word. What I'm trying to say, Studying it is good. Learn, quoting it is good. Telling you, Matthew 5 said this. John, it is good to be doing that. But I mean, what I'm trying to say is quoting it is good, but we have to, if we're not applying it, it is worthless. It, it, it has no substance. That's what I'm trying to say. Hit it in your heart. Quote it. Study it. Make it be a part of your tongue where you can really touch the tongue to fight the enemy. Not only that, you're going to go in a battle, you're going to go on the street and somebody's going to come and say, oh, what do you know about God? And, you know, that whole debate thing. And you should, and you can quote these scriptures to them. It's good. But how, how can you um, demonstrate it, if that makes sense? What's the testimony to show and to prove that your God is the real God? He is the true and living God. You know what I mean? So again, a lot of us quote these scriptures, but we cannot actually tell somebody how we how we know personally that God is a true and living God for ourselves. And um, I think that's what God was trying to say to me when he gave me that scripture that we need to not only, you know, quote the scriptures, but live them, you know. Mm. Um, Amen. So Amen. Forward, mm -hmm. Amen. I went to 1 Samuel 15, 22. Behold, to, to obey is better than sacrifice. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is, the, is, is, is as iniquity and idolatry, because thou has rejected the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And as I said earlier on, it, it, we, we, we see disobedience as, you know, God saying, go down the road, we don't go down the road. He said, whatever, we don't do it. I don't know how we, or uh, you guys, look at disobedience as being disobedient to God. But it's the mere fact that he said to you, change. He's, he's, he's prompting you to change. You're being disobedient. He's saying, like, you know, do this, but you do your thing. Like, Again, you, you allow flesh to continue because this is almost here. I always say, so. Again, I'm guilty of that. Back in the days before I grow. <laughs> um, so we, we disobey God by, again, we, we quote these scriptures, we read these scriptures, but we're not applying them to our life. And because we're not applying them, we're sinning. As I said, we get anxious. You know, I used to get anxious. I somewhat still get anxious, but it's not like before. It doesn't have the same impact. It doesn't give me the same result. So when it comes on to me, and I used to get so frustrated, and I want to swear, and I want, I have to explode. I feel like I need to explode. It, it doesn't have that effect anymore, if that makes Amen. sense. Amen. I'm able to apply the word of God. And, and, and again, as I said, Think, oh God, am I am I am I allowing the devil to laugh in your face? So I try not to do certain things. That's what I use. As I can I said, find something for you to 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 to, to relate your relationship with God is your own personal thing, right? Find something with God, how you can, you know, your own banter, basically. You know what I mean? Have your own banter with God. This is what you do, this is how you apply that relationship and maintain the relationship with God. Because again, in every relationship, there's a struggle. And it's about being understanding, being patient, and all these stuff. So it's the same with God. I don't know about anybody else, but that's how me and my God is. And um, so yeah, we sin a lot of time by being disobedient. You know, we're be I, I have been disobedient by not 
applying the word of God. So therefore, I feel, or I, or I um, feel my own joy, reject my own joy, reject my own blessing. It's not that God is not blessing us. It's not that he's not hearing our prayers. It's because we are not able to walk in it because of disobedience. Oh, you know, changing ways. We're praying for our husband. We're praying for a wife. We're praying for a new job. We're praying for a change. Whatever change you're praying for, whatever you're asking and seeking God for, he's answering the prayer because he said he'll never withhold anything good from us. But we are waiting for a specific way. We are looking for a way that is going to come to somewhat feed our flesh. Let me, let me, let me try to break that down without. So it's like, I'm asking for a husband, for example. But yet still, he's, God is prompting me and he's telling me and he's showing me whether he's letting people tell me, whether he's showing me for himself that I need to change certain things. I need to, I need to change. I need to change my mindset. I need to change my learned behavior. I need to change things because, again, if he's going to send you a good husband, a good wife, imagine he's sending you a good man, but then you run away, run away the man because we are not ready for it. Our mindset is not changed. We don't know, understand what love is. So when the man comes and giving us that love, that love from God, we are, we, are, we are trying to find the love from him, maybe in materialistic stuff, because that's how we associate love. So knowledge, again, is power. Changes is vital. You know what I mean? So, but because I'm disobedient in, in, in wanting to change, wanting to adjust, wanting to just listen to the word of God and listen to what he's saying to me, following his direction, I go the other way. Maybe my husband was going in Peckham. I'm just saying, but and he said that this day, this time, time to move, go there. You got to meet someone for your job, you know, a new job. It was an opportunity, but we were disobedient. I'm not in the mood now, or because we're used to a specific part, we a specific direction. We go that way rather than going the way that God is asking us to go. It's like when we're driving and the sat nav tells us to go a specific way because we, they see that there's a traffic car, an accident, and they change our route, and we decide, oh, but the way the longer. And, you know, you're going for the easy way and the way that we know comfortableness is also a little part of sinning, but I'll get to that. And um, it, it, it's, then we, we end up in traffic, buck up in the accident, so then we delay our time again. So where are we going to go a longer way for maybe two minutes difference time, we end up with half an hour um, delay because of disobedience to the sat nav. And it's the same with our Christian walk. When God is talking to us, we disobey, we do our own thing because we are used to it. This is how I know for do it. This is what's comfortable for me. And again, comfortableness breeds sometimes stagnancy because we stay at the same place and stagnancy cause sin against God, sin for yourself and stress. And when you're too stressed, again, you're sinning. I, I can <laughs> see the pattern. Because, yes. Oh, God, I need a new job. And I'm, that job has stressed me out. I'm so tired of this. Whatever we're complaining about. And because we're already disobedient in the first place, we didn't get the opportunity or we reject the opportunity because of, again, we weren't ready. We're not, sometimes because we're not ready for certain things because physically, mentally, emotionally, whatever it is, Ali, we are not ready. So we delay our blessing. So what we, were, what, what, what we were meant to get two months ago, what we were meant to be getting in two months' time, it sometimes goes on for two years and even longer because we fail to change. And, um, and again, it all comes back down to change of mind. It comes to, do you know who you are? Because if we don't know who we are, we will not be able to, you know, embrace. We will not be able to, to receive what's good for us. You know, like, again, I always talk about me. For years, and I, it's something I'm still struggling with, I, don't, I didn't know how to receive gifts. Like, I don't know how to receive gifts. I feel like, I feel like I have to be given. And it's not that, again, maybe back then I didn't think I deserved it. But now I'm, now I'm aware, and I'm being honest, I had issues. So I didn't know how to appreciate being appreciated, if that makes sense. Because maybe I think I, didn't, I wasn't worth it. You know what I mean? And that's because I didn't know who I am or who I was at the time. Now when I find that, I've grow, learned to grow to love me, to love me the way how God loved me, to see me how God has seen me, then I'm able to be more free. I feel like I deserve it. <laughs> you know, not being, not being boast, not being presumptuous, but I deserve it. And 
but before I used to not reject stuff. I didn't know how to receive things. You know, I didn't know how to ask because I feel like there's always just that thing and then whatever in my mind. And a lot of us maybe struggle with that. We don't think we deserve it, and that's because we don't know who we are. And I, I will, I will, I will prompt everyone to take that time out to say, God, who am I? Who, who do you say I am? You know, who did you create me to be? And the sooner we get to find that, is the sooner we're able to live the life of a more peaceful, a more deserving life, if that makes sense. And again, whatever I'm saying, you can take your notes because I'm able to answer any question afterwards if you didn't understand, if you want me to elaborate on anything. Um, so yeah, it is important to have a changed mindset. Know who you are and to whom you belong. Because if you, if you belong, <laughs> like I have here, like, if you're royalty, you're born in royalty, right? You're going to live like a royal. So why should you live a proper life? Why should you live less than when you can be great? You can live a life like the, 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 the kings and the prince and all these persons. They, they live a life. They have everything that they want, right? And they work in their own way to get it. They don't have to do certain things, but yet, because of their name, you, you, they don't even need to ask them things. It's just given. And it's the same. We serve a mighty God. He is the king of all kings. But yet we are living like we don't know who our father is. You know what I mean? Our physical, our earthly father, if they're rich, rich people, rich kids born into riches, they don't know certain things. Everything they want is given to them on a platter. You know what I mean? They even get a car before the time because they can afford it. Their parents give it to them. They live that rich life, that life of not knowing what stress is. So when, when if they should bought their two, and the moment their dad say no to them, they feel like, oh my gosh, my world is ending because they didn't know that before. But yet still, we are living that life that we don't like. We, we, we don't we don't have greatness. And again, I said we because I am guilty of that. We live that life like you know, I, I don't deserve that, or we are free to go for what we want, and we stay at a level that we are meant to be further in our life, but we are not there because, again, we are afraid of stepping into the new. We are afraid of stepping into what we deserve or seek what we deserve and go for it. You know what I mean? So that is that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I have here, I'm going to read it without strain our point. I realize that a lot of us, a lot of us struggle. No, a lot of the struggle that we go through is because of our disobedience and stubbornness. Jonah disobeyed God and and was um what did I have to can't even remember can't even see what I write. Um yeah, sorry, no no no. So Jonah disobeyed God and was followed by the wheel. He ran rather than obeying God. A lot of us run away from our blessing, run away from God leading because we refuse to obey. We refuse to have change, have a changed mind, change character, change behavior, just grow. A lot of us refuse to change or refuse to grow. When we disobey God, not only that we deny ourselves of blessings, but we embarrass God, make people turn away from God, which is another sin. We, we, we are telling people that our God is good. God will provide all your needs according to his riches and glory. God will do this. God will make a way, you know, he, he paved the, 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 the floor with gold, did it, did it, did it. all these good stuff we're telling people. But then we are living like a papa. We are, we, are, we are lacking, you know, we are always, oh, poor me, you know, I'm struggling, I'm suffering, I'm, whatever we say, you know, we, we, we again, we curse ourselves with these stuff. And it's our disobedience, as I said before. And um, again, I can say it, because I can't speak for no one I can speak for myself. There are certain things where I could have done better, be further, but I'm not there because of my disobedience. Because at the time I was lacking to change. Oh, I like things this way. I don't like that. I'm afraid of this and I'm afraid of that. I can't do crowd. I don't like changing. All of the all of the stuff I I flesh, I shanique, I the flesh. But I fail to to realize that God can do all things. And with God all things are possible. So again, we deny these stuff. Knowing who 
you are is very important in 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 the decisions that we make. If we know that we are set free, deliver, deliver, delivered, a child of God, a child of the King, then why are we living like paupers, living less than we should? With this, we give people the right to question who we are serving. When, <clears throat> for example, when when do you ever see a like Prince William such Harry, any one of them, any of the royalty, dressing and looking depleted and distressed? Our appearance is very important important in our walk with God. If we are not approachable, welcoming, then we are struggle. Then we struggle in our delivery and ministry. We can't be wanting to minister to people, but we are not approachable. We are not understanding. We have no patience. We 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 don't listen. We don't. You know, we we tend to want to give people our advice or whatever based on what we are going through at the moment or where we are. We are unable to be honest. We are unable to allow God. To work through us and to speak through us we are mere, mere flesh we are doing fleshly stuff you know so right now i'm going through a certain situation so when somebody comes to me for advice i'll advise them based on what i'm going through rather than what god want me to tell them or uh, how god want me to receive them and to help them you know what I, I don't know if i'm making sense but we somewhat always are tend to do that we preach to people what we you know think we know but not necessarily what god is telling us even if god tell us a word to get to deliver, we somewhat change it. We dilute what God is saying to 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 um fit to how we think we want it to be our oh we where we are at the moment. Our testimonies should be a praise to the Most High God, a gate opening to allow others to see God's hands at work. And um, <clears throat> I said that because I think a lot of times we have to get a testimony, we get tested. And it, as we know, we test, we have testimony with every message, the message. And we, we will repeat the testimony, but sometimes we don't even realize the, the, the different aspect, the different branches of the testimony and what God is doing. And what God showed me since this week was our testimony have different areas. It, your testimony should be showing miracle. Your testimony should be speak should be saying that showing how your obedience or disobedience, you know, affect your, your, your situation at the time. Your testimony shows a, a sense of sacrifice, um, denying of flesh. Your testimony shows the grace and mercy of God, you know, and how and what happened when you let go and let God. What am I trying to say? I'm saying that each testimony that you have, it, 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 when you're speaking it back, because our testimony is for our test is for a testimony. Our testimony is meant to be a blessing, to to be, uh, a, a, as I said, a gate opening for people to see who God is. That's also your connection with God, where you learn who God is for you. Not only that you were told that God is good. You went to Sunday school for me with a child. Your mother was a Christian. Your father was a pastor. All of these stuff is good. But what is your relationship with God? And it's, 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 our test, it's our test and our mess that we've been through that we're, and when we overcome it and come out of it, we're able to see that, oh, there is God. Like, I know that I couldn't say it was Junior who did it for me. It wasn't this person. It wasn't that person. But, and even if it was that person that comes through for me, it had was to be God that allowed them to, 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 to bless me, to, 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 to help me to, to be a blessing basically. So in everything, in every testimony, there is a miracle. There is a, a, a sense of, you know, sacrifice. What I'm trying to say is, okay, let me give a testimony <laughs> so I can explain it better. Ah, uh, Again, I have friends on here. <laughs> I don't know, know stuff that I didn't know. But, uh, okay. So, which one should I do next? Um, when I was going to my homeless place, let me use that one. And um, again, I was a person who was very defensive. I will always defend myself because I've always been like that from a child. I'm a defender of the earth. So <laughs> I guess I take stuff in my own hand, right? So I remember when I was school, being pregnant and, you know, and again, had no papers at the time, and um, I become homeless. 
and um <clears throat> you know when you have the it's like you have the power to to do stuff if that makes sense and um but at that moment i remember god said to me i think from then he was working on me to be still you know basically shut him out for a bit and um i was able to defend myself but i didn't and it's like i was being more of god help me you know trying to not put people in problem put people in trouble in danger or just mess up anybody's life i'll be obedient and i and, and i do what i needed to do i i was told to leave and i and i left i clean i left and i say thank you you know i guess you know they the the persons in question they are somewhat prepared another place but but god says no and i had us to be humble i had to be humble because it, it took a lot and i stayed with friends and um i was between two friends at the time and it took a lot of out of me and i remember once i was leaving my friend house because i felt like you know giving them space if, I, if i'm between two persons house i'm not at one person house too long and um i remember i was leaving my friend once and that i was walking to the bus stop and i was just crying I could have contained the tears just walking. And it's funny because I think it was the same day she messaged me and she said, you know, you don't have to leave, right? <laughs> and it was weird that she did that because I said nothing to nobody. It was just between me and God. And I felt like, you know, I just want to, I don't want to be in our space too much. You know, she's got her kids, blah, 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 blah. And she was doing a great thing to help me. And, um, but, the flesh and being, you know, all uh, being, um, thinking about who I am and again, pride and all these stuff, I just tend to be like, you know. So when she said that to me, I knew that God was hearing me, if that makes sense. Because yeah. she didn't have to text me. She didn't have to message me, but she's messaged me that message and it kind of let me feel like, okay, so she's not thinking anything. She don't feel like I'm, you know, you know what I mean? Anywho, Fast forward to trying to get help, get going places to get help, not having no papers, baby's not here yet, so it was difficult. And again, because of fear, and again, my mindset wasn't changed, fear and everything. You know, I went and I was trying to protect that individual as well, that allowed me to be homeless. And then it's like, I was telling the stories, but I wasn't able to say everything because I'm trying to hold back stuff. So I'm putting myself in situation, but at the same time, but God didn't want me to, I don't think he wanted me to put someone in a situation, like in trouble, basically, to save myself. That's, again, being selfish and whatever. But at the time, I wasn't thinking about it like that because the girl was just hurt. Hurt people, hurt people. But that godly part of me, and, and it's not even me in the flesh, because the flesh could have done anything, I'm telling you. But the spirit of God that was in me, <laughs> wasn't allowing me to do certain things. So I remember going out to the country to visit a friend, coming back down. I was going to help her. She dropped me back to London. And um, I went to a, another friend just to spend the day with them. And I remember praying to God before. And I said, God, you know, prepare someone for me. Prepare someone. I'm, be, I'm being afraid. It's like I'm not trusting you enough. Like, prepare the right person. Call my name to the right person. That when I do approach the place again, it is different because again, as I said, fear was crippling me. And I remember I was going with um this this lady, my friend Auntie at the time, and she was going to the house. She, I was spending the day with her, as as I said, I really live nowhere. I was just between houses, so just spend the day. If I'm out of the house, um, when, when I go back, it's just sleep basically. And then <clears throat> she said she's gonna go to the house and have to pay some bill. I was like, I don't mind. I was there with her, and I went. And I was sitting in the car as she went to the, the, the housing office. And a voice said to me, go back in. And the flesh again said, but I went there already and they told me that don't, they don't do no request for public funds. So why should I go back? You know what I mean? But then God said, go back. I was like, okay, let me be obedient. And I went back in. And when I went back in, I went to the same desk and I asked the question, do you do no, do you do no request for public funds? And they said, yes. 
I was like, oh, it's weird because I came here two months ago and they told me that they don't do it. Like, who told you that? I was like, a lady was sitting here and she told me that. Anywho, she said, no, we do do it. She called the manager. She said I should come back, I think. I went back the next day and um, went back. So it happened that <laughs> God called my name to someone. It so happened that, that the day that I went, I saw the manager. And it, when I say that God is good mm-hmm. and obedience is very vital, mm-hmm. right? And um, because of my obedience, I was able to see the manager. And God has already called my name to her. When she called me in the room to do the interview to see how they can help me, she had a booklet. And, you know, they asked her a million and one questions. And I hate it because I feel like, oh, I'm not after the safe stuff. And my situation, it wasn't my best because I didn't, I didn't plan my life to be like that, if that makes sense, but it happened. And um, I kid you not, she asked me like two questions. She asked me, when did I come in the country? Or maybe three. Who was I living with? Like, I came to my, my, son, my, my dad and stuff. And how did I get in the situation that I was in? As in being pregnant, there's no dad, blah, 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 blah. And um, I answered those questions, and she filled the form by herself. And I think she, because telling her the story of how I came to the country and how I get in the situation, you know, and I was, again, being honest, because, again, at that time, it was like, I had no pride, but desperate time for desperate measures. And I just was pouring out because I was broken. I was hurt. And I was like, God, do your thing. And I, 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 I literally, now I'm talking, I'm seeing that my flesh was not in control because some of the things I was saying, I, I don't know. I was just, I was just being transparent. I was just letting it out. I told her, listen, I was insecure. I didn't know my worth. And, you know, I should have left. I did leave. I keep going back because I had void. I had issues and it was comfortable for me to be with that individual for so long. Because it works for me, again, flesh, selfishness, and all this stuff. So even though my selfish thought put me in certain situations. And, um, but God has called my name to this individual. And she said, I remember what she said to me, don't worry, I'm going to help you. And she's like, ask your friend if you can spend another, another time, spend some more time with her. Because I could move you tonight. I could put you somewhere today. But looking at you and listening to you and there's something in me that's telling me where, where the place that is available for you to go is not for you i was like Ooh. and she <laughs> said go back to your friend and ask it and ask her if it's okay to stay a bit more and i did and i kid you not when i think weeks are passing and I, she, she will call me to say i haven't forgotten about you and anybody who knows about housing situation knows those stuff don't really work and it's like you're different people and a different, like, they're human and you're, you're animals sometimes. They treat you like nobody. But she will call me to reassure me that she hasn't forgotten about me. What I'm trying to say is God has called my name to her. And by obedience, allow me to meet her. And she did help me. And I remember there was time when they were stressing me. Like, my son's family was, they was, they were, listen, it was the grace of God who kept me and keeping me now. And when I break, I was like, I can't be bothered. Just send me to country. I just want to get away from them. I'm so stressed. And I would call her. I don't know. I didn't know you even have access to that. I could call them at any time. And I would call her. And she would say, come and meet me. She would come out of her office at Barmouth Road. She would meet me on Second High Street just to talk to me. Just to comfort me. And who else but God? Who does that? I've never seen that. And I've heard people complain about these stuff and I've, like, I've never experienced that. You know what I mean? And I'm telling you, up to today, D, if I, the number that I have in my phone, I can call her and she will answer me. Talk. Every change is in my life. Every growth, every good outcome, I can call her and share it with her. And she was like, you are always, you are, you are always one of my clients who I know will always make it like the situation wasn't who you are. What I'm trying to say is God called my name to this individual. So therefore, he prepared it already. But if I was disobedient, I wouldn't. I would have endured more. Am I making sense? I would yeah. have maybe still go back later at the time. 
maybe still get the help, but not with that individual who was able to understand, who was able to be a mentor to me. It was weird. I said, I could call her at any time and break down. And she'd be like, okay, Shani, I'm ready to talk to me. Come and meet me. And that's when I want to go country. She's like, I'm not moving you. She's like, I'm not moving you. I can move you. <laughs> but I will not send you to country. Your support team is here. So I will leave you in London and stuff. Like, it was just beautiful. Even when she leave no request and move on and elevate in her job and leave no request, I could still call her for help and support and advice. And what am I trying to say? Change of mind, growth, obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. Because I would have endured more if I wasn't obedient. I would have maybe get help, but I would have gone through so much more that I maybe feel belittled because they can belittle you when you go to these places. You know, like to my testimony, what I'm trying to say is I see miracles. I see that sacrifice because you have to sacrifice your flesh and allow God to work. You have to give up something. And I give up, I give up my flesh so God can work in me and through me and for me. I, I, I see that there, that God can do all things. I see that God hear my prayers and he answers. I see that God do answer prayer. I, like, what I'm saying is, in your testimony, there should always be more than one aspect that God is doing something. So that's I share that testimony. I could go on with testimonies, trust me. But I'm going to stop there. Um, so my question to you is, to everyone, do you have, do you know each testimony? No, 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 sorry. Do you have a testimony? What does your testimony say to you? And then when you're sharing your testimony, how can how can you dissect your testimony to see that, to, to be able to help others to see that there is a God and that God is a true and living God? You know what I mean? Because in this time that we're living, it is hard to say that there is a God. Let's be honest. You know, because you see the, the heart of man is wicked. This is happening. That is happening. War upon war disease, all type of stuff is happening. And you, you sometimes we question stuff, but the Bible tells us in the end time, these things will be happening, right? So again, can you question it? Because it's been told before. It has been prophesied before. So again, look into your life, look at your testimonies, and see where and what God has done for you, and use it <clears throat> to help others to elevate and to grow and to seek God. You know, let us not sin against God, because we are disobedient. Let us not allow people to turn away from God and not want to know God because we're disobedient. Because, you know, we, 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 are, we are not allowing God's blessing to be showered upon us because we are disobedient. So I think that's what I wanted to talk about. <laughs> um, I hope you've been blessed. Because I have been blessed, you know. It is beautiful to serve God the right way. It is beautiful to follow the manuscript because it is a manuscript. I was saying, if you buy us a table, whatever you buy, you have to build it up. If you do not read the manual, trust me, you may go wrong. And the moment you you put the you put the, the you put the you put something in the wrong place with these stuff that we're buying nowadays, if you have to screw it back down, you somewhat wear out the the the, 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 the screw will wear out a bit. So, and how many times you have to change and screw up and screw down, it makes it get weak. It lose that. So it wouldn't stand as sturdy and I won't last as long as it should. The same with us. You know, the, if you do not follow the money, well, we endure more than we should. We struggle longer than we should. We go through so much <clears> than <throat> we should. You know, we worry. We get anxious because we're not bringing it to God. And let's be frank. When we get anxious and worry, and as I said, we, and I should have said, let, let me be frank. It doesn't change the situation. The only thing changed is you being sick, you feeling tired, you feeling, you know, deflated, you know, don't want to come out of bed. You know, some, somewhat, some people commit suicide, some people self harm. There's so much stuff that happens when we do not allow the will of God to work. And as I said, it's not easy. It is not easy. God, I am hungry. What can I do? God, I want this. You know, or you want to go for yourself, actually where, you're, where you've been able, to, you, you were a person who had to do everything for yourself all the time. So you feel like you don't have to wait for people. 
So then you don't, and by not waiting for people to help, you don't wait on God most of the time. And sometimes God doesn't give us what we want, not because he doesn't want to give it to you, not because he doesn't want to give it to me, it's because you're not ready for it. Are you ready for your blessing that you're asking for? Are you ready for the prayers that you're praying to be answered? And because if you're not ready, it will not have the same effect and impact. You know what I mean? Let your let your blessing come and you're able to see God in it. You're able to enjoy the right way. Not but not because we're greedy or you're trying to run competition with our friends or whatever it is, we're trying to keep the Joneses of Jamaica and don't say, We we want these stuff, but we're not ready for it. We want a new car. We want a car, but can you drive? You, you want a new sofa, but we're still holding on to the old one. Are you going to put the, the new sofa on the old one? We have to make space available for the new. But how can you make space? You have to make a change. You have to move stuff out to move things in. So again, to God be the glory. I pray that our mindset will be changed. I pray that we're able to grow stagnancy. Anything that is stagnant, it's not good. Even the pure water, if you leave water in a bucket, a bottle, once it's open, you close it back for a while, it starts to smell. Anything that is stagnant is not good. So I'm saying, let's not be stagnant in what we're doing. Let's not be stagnant you know, in, in, in our deeds and in our ways and in our serving God. Let us grow. If you've been Christian for 40 years, Tonight, and you cannot, and you're still the same as how you were when you just started serving God. Something is wrong. That means you're not growing. You cannot be the same because knowledge is power. When you learn something new, you're able to apply it. I was a person who would say anything again, you know, you will do certain things, you will act a certain way, but the moment you grow, the moment you know it is not right, you will automatically try to change. One last thing before I finish as I drop it in my spirit. I, you know, the Bible said sex without marriage is sin, right? You should get married. Do, 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 do. And again, a lot of people are like, but you know, you're with the person for long or whatever. And it's not so much the marriage by getting the white wedding, it's so much of what it comes with. Why am I saying that? For me, my example, my testimony. So I am not married and I have a child. And again, even in marriage, you can still be a single parent because marriage can break down. We know that. However, in the first instance, it is more easier. There is that support. There is that, um, what should I say? It's, you know, support is a big, it's a one way, but it's a lot of branches. So, you know, it's not you alone doing it. You have, you can maybe say, you know what, I need to sleep in the whole child. I need to, you know what I mean? There's that help. But when you're by yourself, it's just you. You do everything. And what is meant for two persons to do, or a, or a group, because again, family, family support, one person doing that. Do you know the strain that that have? And what happened is this, because again, we disobeyed the word. We didn't wait for a marriage to start having kids. So you have a child, the person is not there because it's not every man or father is a father, right? So they're not there to support whether financially, emotionally, physically, any of the colors I keep saying. You, it is left on you to do everything by yourself, which brings strain. You can imagine it's a thing that we automatically go through. Some people go through post and depression. Um, I guess it is, it is, it's open to everyone, but I think other person think deeper in it because of lack of support. What am I trying to say is, I then realized what that scripture mean when I got pregnant and was a single mother, or uh, is a single mother. I realized like, oh, that's what God was talking about. Not because he wanted control because they don't have sex for your marriage, or uh, marriage is the, the whole and behold. It's because when things like this happen, it's what happened. How does it help you? And where you're so, when you're less stressed, less whatever, you would not be so anxious and depressed. And when you become anxious, that's when you start to sin because you want to do stuff in your own power 
in your own might, do things for yourself. You can't wait for anything. It's somewhat like forget that God is working. You know what I mean? So again, obedience is better than sacrifice. Thy word have I written in my heart so I will not sin against thee. Mm -hmm. Let us not basically cast witchcraft on ourselves because of disobedience and witchcraft going through stuff being, you know, going through stuff that we don't need to go through because of disobedience. And I'm saying that again because I am a living testimony of that. I couldn't go into all my testimonies, but trust me, you don't know. <laughs> but I am a living testimony of being how disobedience can cause you struggle. Unnecessary struggle and struggle for longer. There are certain things you have to go through to learn and to grow and to experience God and at work. But sometimes we enjoy this stuff longer than we should. We overdo the season, you know, because we are disobedient, we are stubborn, and just fail to change. So that's my few words. But in the name of Jesus, I give you thanks for this morning. I give you thanks for and praise for what you've done, what you're about to do, and what you've already done in my life and in our life on this platform, mighty God. Lord, mm -hmm. I pray in the name of Jesus, mighty God, that whatever I've said, mighty God, you will reside into someone's heart, mighty God. You will be able to, my God, feed them, my God. And not only feed them, my God, but nourish their body and their soul, mighty God. They're able, mighty God, to, to grow, to learn, mighty God, and to change. Lord, I pray, my God, that you help them, my God, to build a relationship with you. A relationship with you, mighty God, that you and only you and them understand each other. When the way how we they communicate with you, the way how they interact with you, Others might not understand it, but by God, you know. Like David, mighty God, even though he done so much wrong. And it and as you and and from man like me and, and who's on the pastor might be thinking, oh David wicked him do this. David says that he's greedy, he's this and he's that. But God, you said he's a man of your own heart. Mm -hmm. Lord, help us, mighty God, to not only look at the, the big things, mighty God, but see, mighty God, even in the small things that we are going wrong. Help us, my God, to be, to dance like David danced, to, 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 to rejoice. In order to dance, you have to be free. Because dancing doesn't come, if you're feeling downlaid, depressed, and sad, you don't even want to get up much less to dance. Dance is a, a reflection of just feeling free and let go and just feeling relaxed and happy in some way. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a demonstration of happiness, of, of enjoyment. Lord, help us to enjoy our life. Help us, my God, to not only exist in this world, but live. Help us, my God, to know who we are mm -hmm. so we're able to experience the life that you've created for us, mighty God. Lord, no longer that we should suffer and struggle situation that we don't need to for any longer because, my God, we don't know who we are. We fail to change because we're so used to being who we have created, the characteristics that we've created because of our environment, because of our parenting, because of our society, because whatever reason, mighty God. But we thank you for your grace and mercy, because even though, mighty God, we've created these characters, but God, your grace, and we're taking so long to learn, we're taking so long to change, we're taking so long, mighty God, to, to seek knowledge and understanding, to change and grow. Your mercy is still sufficient for us, mighty God. But God, I pray, mighty God, you help us, my God, to no longer take advantage of your mercy, but my God, be able to, to walk the walk, be able to, to seek you, be able, mighty God, to live a life, mighty God, fruitful and flourishing, mighty God. Even in the midst of the storm, mighty God, we should be able to sleep and rest. It's just not easy, mighty God. But God, you said you died, that we are able, you, that you can, you can dwell in us, so you can send your Holy Spirit to be with us. And Lord, you're in us, mighty God. So we should be able to live accordingly, mighty God, because we've got you. Lord, help us to no longer fight. Help us to no longer be weary. Help us to no longer be anxious and stressed because we are not allowing you to do your work. We are not allowing you to do what you want to do. We are not able to see your break breakthrough. We are not able to see your blessing because, mighty God, our eyes are blinded, blinded with our characteristics, blinded by our situation. Blinded because of a lack of change. Lord, help us to grow. Help us, my God, to change, have a changed mindset. Help us, my God, to live. Live in peace, live in joy. You said joy and peace do. 
peace that surpasses all understanding. Despite what I'm going through, despite what we're going through, mighty God, let us have peace. But peace comes from you, mighty God. Help us to seek you wholly and not partially. Help us, mighty God, to dwell, mighty God, in you. Help us, mighty God, to allow your Holy Spirit to abide and live with us, in us, mighty God. Help us, mighty God, to open the door to you. And let us, mighty God, decrease in flesh and in self. But let your Holy Spirit be with us, in us, and manifest through us. And be our guide and our light in the time of darkness. Mighty God, even though you're guiding us, you're directing us, my God. We're still going our own way because of disobedience. Because of comfortableness, because of stubbornness, because it's my way, my God, and this is what I used to, this is what I know. Forgive us, mighty God, and help us, my God, to change and to grow and to be better. Help us, my God, to not sin against you presumptuously in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. 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 Thank you, Shanique. All I can say is, wow, 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 wow. What a message. This is God, God given and God spoken. God wants us to change. He doesn't want us to remain the same. I love the scripture that you use. Your word have I, in the Amplifiers, it says, your word have I treasured and stored in my heart. It's like a computer. You store up God's word and you store up, it's like treasures. We store it up so that we might not sin against you. And thank you, Shanique, for your testimony. Thank you for your life experience. Thank you that your testimony is a journey. Uh, truly, we can see how you've grown over the years. Uh, you, uh, you have become a very, very good a uh, speaker and uh, exalter and encourager, woman of God, woman of the word. And when we hid, hide God's word in our heart, um, we will not sin against it, sin against him. And I love what you said, Shanique, about just see, you know, that our flesh sometimes will raise up and want to do things, but we don't want to displease God. We don't want to dishonor God. And so we need to, uh, to reel it in when our flesh is like screaming out and say, no, I don't want to, um, I don't want to walk in disobedience because as we can see, there's a, uh, the scripture that she said about um, disobedience is better to obey. It's better than, to, than, to, than, better than sacrifice because rebellion is a sin of witchcraft. I don't know if you realize how, how rebellion, when you rebel uh, against God, you're telling God, no, I'm not doing that. You're not actually saying that, but your actions are saying, no, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to listen. I don't want to follow what your, your instruction. Um, that has so much consequences when we rebel. And this whole week has been... God has been speaking to us about obedience. He's been speaking to us about rebellion. He's been speaking to us about not listening and not obeying and not following his instructions because we know that, you know, there's, there's, there's havoc. We can cause havoc in our life, unnecessary havoc. And, uh, and as Shanique said, our disobedience can cause our blessings to be delayed. So we need to change our mindset, know who you are, uh, change your mindset. Don't say, I'm not going to stagnate anymore. I'm not going to be the same. You can look back 20 years, 10 years, and are you, how have you grown? Are you the same? We don't want to be the same. We want to move. We want to change that mindset. We want to change that record. We don't want to speak negative things of our lives. We're going to speak positive things of our lives because God wants us to grow Shanique, I just want to pray for you now. And uh, before I go to Junior, I just want to pray for you and thank God for this uh, message and thank God for your obedience. Because when I asked Shanique if she would share, she could have said no. She could have said no, but God impressed it upon her heart and she said yes. So Father, I thank you for Shanique. Father, I thank you for her obedience this morning. 
Father, I know she has been preparing. She's been listening to your voice. She's been listening to what you would have her to share. And Father, you place this word upon her heart. So Father, I thank you that she will have a listening here open heart to hear what you would say father god that she could deliver this word father and she delivered it delivered it exactly the way how you wanted her to deliver it father for us to to know that father god when there's there's rebellion if we rebel against you father it's not only in the big sins but in the little sins and the little things father where we don't listen where we don't follow where we're not we're not gentle we're not kind we're not listening we're not you know, we're not reaching out, Father. These simple things that we can do that we're not doing in our lives, Father, can cause us to be in disobedience. So, Father, I pray that, Father God, that you will speak to every single person on this platform this morning. And, Father, that we will change our mindset. We will change our stagnancy. We will change that rebellious heart. We will be open and honest and listen. And, Father, choose to do better. Choose to be to follow, choose to listen. So Father, I speak a blessing into Shanique's life as she's delivered this word this morning. Father, I pray a blessing upon her home, upon her family, upon her child. Father, let goodness and mercy follow her. Let, let your abundant blessings be showered upon her. Father, I want you to restore everything, Father, that enemy has stolen, anything that has been delayed in her life, Father God. I pray as, uh, uh, that you will bring it back, Father. You bring, accelerate her, Father God, into her future. Father God, everything, Father, you, everything happens for a reason. And Father, you said all things work together for good for them that love you. So Father, I thank you. She loves you. And Father, God, everything that the enemy thought he had her bound by, Father, she's no longer bound. She's free in Jesus' name. And she's delivered this word, Father, because she's walked in obedience and she's listened to what you wanted her to say, Father God. I know there's a blessing, a blessing that will come into her, Father. And I thank you for that, for her life. I thank you for her friends that are on here, Father, that they will, Lord God, see her as a role model, a positive role model, an example, a testimony of your goodness, Father. I thank you for that, Father. I give you all the praise for her life and what you're going to do in her life. You're going to excel her life. You're going to open doors. More doors are going to open for her to speak and to encourage, Father. So I thank you that, Father, you started a good work in her and you'll continue to allow her to flourish, Father, and grow and become that great woman of God that you called her to be. Father, I thank you for her life and I give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to go to Junior now. Go ahead, Junior. Uh, bless you. Bless you, everybody. Good morning. Uh, thanks for uh, the message, uh, Shanique, <laughs> of course, as usual. Uh, thanks for being uh, vulnerable and open. Um, and that's, like you said, being like David. Look, I've got just a few prayer, prayer points um, I want to pray into um, concerning what you're saying. So I'm just picking out the prayer points that I could, that drops in my spirit as according to what you have said. And one of the things you have said, obviously, is... Um, uh well i mean you said about the the, the uh anxiety and depression um that you were facing and stuff like that but uh, as according to some most people like yourself like what you probably had done is try to manage it on your own try to deal with it trying to and many of us uh, as people even christians believers they intend to do this as well and i think the topic uh, according to your topic is to know who your god is know who you are uh, in God and of course many people um, would state this even when they're believers many people say they believe in God even though they don't um, uh, dedicate their life to God many people are believers according to association and so on and so forth uh, or the, the, the <laughs> some of the one of the Jamaican songs is one day Christians you know they only go to church on Sundays and uh, what intends to happen is that we as people that say we believe in God somehow try to struggle and try to manage these things by ourselves but not knowing truly who our god is you mentioned david himself david no knew who he, his god was you know because he could have gone to him and be vulnerable and open and he had people that he could be vulnerable and open to as well to be able to help him or pray into or whatever makes application on his behalf so what am i saying this morning um i mean you know what in regards to what I'm saying, I find 
um, before I came on, there was a call coming, one of my teammates and whatever. Um, and he's a he has a bit of a Cockney accent. And what I realized is that soon as he gets on the line, I went into this accent of his. And that's how we are sometimes. When we're around people, we somehow intend to bury who we are and we go into this full facade of a person and we we just kind of like imagery or mim mimic the the environment or the, the 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 where we are so to speak so if i was around this fella i would have actually even you could hear that already around this fella <laughs> you know i've already gone into uh, some kind of accent so i'm already covering who i am and gone into an accent right to portray uh, uh, reflect him or that person and it's the same if I'm around perhaps maybe a Jamaican person uh, somehow the pat will come out or something like that I, I mean I don't, I don't know some some people say you lost your your accent or something like that but I don't know when I'm around people like that who's just constantly speaking the pat or maybe it's just it just comes out and stuff and then you know so different different persons different reality different surrounding you just automatically adopt to that and sometimes we could do that in a religious setting as well we and i think you mentioned this we intend to once you get into a spiritual state or a religious setting somehow we just gone into uh, uh over spirituality we are spiritualized you know so the person who's weak as a minister will come on and so to speak be strong if that's the case uh, and you're thinking, but there is an issue that you could have resolved there. And what am I saying this morning is that sometimes we need to have that come to that point of revelation where we stop being, I don't want to use the word fake, but we stop hiding behind the mask and being true to who we are, being true to what is happening. I'm not saying you should go tell your stories, uh, your problems to every person out there. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is when we come to God, we cannot fool God. God knows what's in your heart. God knows you before you were born. He knows you when you placed you in your mother's womb. He helped to shape you. He knows all about you. But sometimes we intend to think we could uh, fool God. When we come in the presence of God, we act spiritual. We act like we're all perfect. We act like everything is, is handled. Everything is under control. But really and truly, anxiety and depression is wearing us down. And even that one scripture to say, be anxious for nothing. But in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, you know, take your request uh, onto the Lord. But it's one of them ones where you're thinking, when you look at that scripture, you're thinking, but it seems very contradictory because how can I be not anxious when there's a problem or depressed and be happy about it at the same time? It sounds crazy, but it's the point that you get to when you are, let's just say you're used to coming to God. But if you're not used to coming to God, what intend to happen is, that we just overlooked and we always be anxious and we cannot be happy because we're anxious, because we're depressed, we cannot have the happiness. But if we learn to practice to come unto the Lord, one time it might not happen, two times it might not happen, but the, the more times we practice to come to the Lord and leave it there and rejoice, eventually we'll be in a place where we always allow ourselves to be joyful in the Lord and let him deal with that issue or that problem. So this morning, I want to be able to pray uh, for everyone according to, and if, if this is you, obviously, you know, join me in prayer and whatever for people who are uh, suffering privately, secretly with uh, depression, anxiety, and yet they go to work every day and they put the face on, yet they go to, uh, I guess it's easier to say, to be honest, if you just put the face on, you don't have to deal with people asking you about your worries, your situation, your sorrow, and then you have to go into the emotional distress and then you might end up crying and you're thinking, I don't want to go through that right now. But when you come on to the Lord, can I beg you? I, I'm pleading with you. Don't do that. Cry before the Lord. Go speak to the Lord. Don't pretend before the Father. He knows you. The Bible says he knows what you're going to ask for before you ask it. He knows it. So what am I saying this morning? Humble your heart onto the Father and say, you know what, Lord? Here I am. I'm broken. I'm being honest before you. I'm broken. And if so, the Lord leads you to someone that you could speak to or pray with, please do so because the Lord wants to free us this, free us this morning because it's not easy to speak to an invisible God. It's, it's probably easier, we would say, to speak to someone we can see. 
So let's pray that yet the people that God has chose for us, we could see God in that person and be able to re uh, relate and to release in that area. So I'd like to pray with you guys this morning. Um, if you are one of these people that are suffering with anxiety and depression, and yet you feel like you cannot show this side of you because everybody is relying on you to be strong. Everybody's relying on you to be the Shani. <laughs> so to, I'm just using you as that example, you know, to be okay. I want us to pray this morning honestly and earnestly because I want the Lord to see your honesty and meet you at your point of need. I put in the chat, the Bible says, come as you are, but we will say, don't stay as you are. Don't leave the same. So Father, we thank you this morning as we come honestly and earnestly. Father, Lord, with the importance of knowing that the time is short that we are living in. As according to knowing that the devil has a short time, but Father, he's out like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And Father, Lord, sometimes we come under the false pretense of not knowing who we are. <laughs> or sometimes we get caught up in our own emotions and forget who we are. Sometimes, Father, Lord, as we've heard, we've been in the uh, the spiritual, uh, let's just say in the, the body of Christ for a while. But Father, we still have no understanding. As we've heard, knowledge is power. But I pray that, Father Lord, you give us understanding with that knowledge. Because, Father, understanding who you are, how you are, how you work, how you are to us, how much you love us, will help us to understand deeper. And we know that anxiety will be released from us once we understood this. So, Father, I pray, Father Lord, using as we are here this morning, praying for one another. I pray that you release us from all these burdens, all these cares. As the Bible says, cast your cares upon him for he cares for you. Father, I pray this morning that you will open our hearts, open our minds to be true. For God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You said to the lady at the well that father, there's a time coming where, Father, Lord, you, you will be seeking for people who will worship you in spirit and in truth. But because there is no truth in our lives and we mimic our surroundings and we shadow our surroundings and we go to the energy of our surroundings, Father, we are not true to who you are to us. We're not saying, Father, Lord, that we want to go about our lives being an emotional wreck in front of everyone. But, Father, what we are saying this morning is that, Father, when we come on to you and people whom you have led us to, who is a person of God that brings your presence, that is able to speak to us and guide us and help us, help us to be real. Help us, Father, Lord, not to pretend. Help us, Father Lord, to take the mask off. That as we be real, because the Bible says we will know the truth and the truth shall set us free. Help us not to come this morning, Father Lord, pretending like we are holy than thou. <laughs> like we were the fourth in the, uh, the third in the Trinity or the fourth in the Trinity. Father, help us this morning to come humbly before you presenting ourselves vulnerable before you, that you may start that great, or finish that great work that which you have started in us, as the word of God says. Him who have started a good work in you is more than able to accomplish, to finish it. So as you are the author, Father, be also the finisher of our faith. That we will not leave here the same, but we will be touched, moved by your presence, by your spirit. For you said where two or more are gathered, there you will be. And we're praying that as we anything is concerning you, we know that you're here in the midst to bless and to do good. So, Father, here's our heart. Like we heard the song this morning, mold it and make it. Here's our mind, Lord, transform it. Take our will, Father, Lord, to be like yours. Because, Father, this is whom we want to be. A people of God, not a people that resemble or pretend to be of God. We want to be the truth, that the truth may set someone else free. 
We want to show that the Lord is good. As it says, come and see, taste of the Lord and see that he's good. We want to come, we want people to see Father Lord according to our lives. We want people to hear our testimonies. As your word says, Father Lord, that we have overcome the dragon. We have overcome our situation. We have overcome pride. We have overcome, Father Lord, uh, uh, anxiety. We have overcome stress. We have overcome depression. We have overcome our, our, our um, oppressor. We have overcome him by the blood of the lamb, by the sacrifices of Jesus that went through the humiliation, that went through the torture, that went through the beatings, that went through the shame, that we might not be shamed. We not, might not be broken. You were broken for me, Father Lord, that I don't need to be broken. But I know, Father, as a human, we have life here on this earth in flesh. And in this earthen vessel, we know, Father Lord, that sometimes it can be broken. But I pray, Father Lord, that your Holy Spirit may indwell, live in us. That all that suffering, as the word would say, for the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. So, Father, as hard as it is, as tough as it is, as impossible as it may seem. For with man, Father Lord, some things are impossible. Well, all things are, some, most things are impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So Father Lord, right now, I decree and declare by your word of healing that you said healing is the children's bread. It's your word, not mine, it's yours. And I pray healing in these areas of our minds of our hearts, of our entire being. That, Father Lord, right now, we, we come against every depressive mode. Right now, we, 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 we come against every mode that wants to put everything in secret, cover everything under the mat. Right now, we come against every anxiety, every depression, every oppression, and we command them to leave this place, leave this sanctuary, Leave our homes, leave our families, leave our children in the name of Jesus. Let it first start with us, Father, that you break us, mold us and make us. Because you are the potter, we are the clay. So, Father, make shape us, mold us and make us into what you want this morning. As we open up and give ourselves freely over to you. So, Father, Lord, deep calleth unto deep. You know who's here that is calling out, that needs you that needs a change, that needs a newness, that needs these anxieties, these depression, these shame to go. Father, Lord, I re we receive healing in all these areas. We receive that miracle in all these areas. You said anything we ask of in the name of Jesus shall be done, shall be done. So, Father, we believe by faith, the faith of the people that is here this morning, that's trusting in your word, that's holding on to your every word. We believe that we have received. In Jesus' most precious, wonderful, comforting name, we pray, amen and amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. May his name be glorified forever. In Jesus' most blessed name. Hallelujah, amen. Thank you for listening. Praise be to God. Um, thank you, Junior, for... Uh just um, sharing and expressing and just expounding on uh, in respect of what uh, Shanique shared this morning and your prayers directed to those that are in a particular area of need. And uh, one thing we can always do, we can come, we can always come boldly and confidently onto the throne of grace. Um, where we can obtain mercy, tender heartedness, loving kindness and favor to help in every situation and every time of need. And uh, this is a time of need for each and every one of us because there's none of us that can say that we're at a need. I haven't got a need. We all have needs. We all have situations and circumstances in our life that goes beyond our own ability and our own strength. And ultimately, 
ultimately, um, when it boils down to it, we have to say there has to be a God. There has to be a Savior. There has to be a Lord. There has to be someone that I, ca I can lean on, depend on, roll on, have faith in, have confidence in beyond my own ability. And um, I thank God because uh, for Shani, because she was very uh, graphic in terms of uh, reflecting on our own life in relationship, in, in accordance with our walk and our relationship with God. And, uh, and so she was able to break it down in a sense that we should all be able to identify with an aspect of what she shared this, this morning. And I know that uh, she would have invited um, a lot of her friends, her associates on this morning. And one thing I, I, I praise this is that every one of us, as we're here gathered on this platform, we can all testify of being a child of God, a child of the King, hears of hears of the Father and joint hears with Jesus Christ. Now that is a big statement because we don't see, from a human perspective, we never see ourselves like as being, an, being a hearer of God and joint here with Jesus Christ. That means everything that Jesus has, we have. Everything that Jesus has access to, we have access to. Our minds won't, doesn't enable us to comprehend the extent and the gracious invitation that God gives us as we receive Jesus Christ as our personal Savior and Lord. And so there are two areas of prayer that uh, I believe that we need to pray into. One is that if we haven't had that personal walk and experience with Christ, if we haven't had made Jesus our Lord and Savior, if we haven't given our hearts to God, if we haven't surrendered in totality to God, then I say we need to do that today. We need to do that right now. And secondly, there may be those who you have done that, but because of circumstances and situations in life, you've strayed from the path. You no longer become dependent on the father, but you become dependent on things that you feel that if you can attain them will give you security and peace and a sense of satisfaction, a sense of um, being affirmed in this life. And we know that there's nothing outside of Christ that can fully affirm us in terms of what God created us to be. Remember, the father is our creator. He, he designed us, he created us. He knows every aspect, every fiber of our being. He knows what he instituted in us. He knows the very purpose and the very destiny that lies ahead for each and every one of us. And yet many, many may not have come to that point of realization to know that, you know what? It's not about me. It's about what God created me to be. And so we need to come to that place where we just say, God, you know, even, even the, the scriptures will express the prodigal son, the story of the prodigal son, who was in his father's house, who had everything at his disposal. He, the love of the father was continually expressed before him. And yet he would have come to a point in time when he felt whether it's big enough or man enough or whatever, but he felt that he could choose to be independent of his father's direct love. And he could take the spoils or take his inheritance before his time and leave his father's house. And yes, he approached his father and said, look, what is, um, what belongs to me or what, inheritance you laid aside for me i'd like to take it now please and uh, experience life for myself and many of us we may come to that point 
when we don't really depend on God or the Lord, our Savior, but or even the Word of God. We don't take heed to the Word. And uh, the Word might be there and we gloss over it, and, but we don't take it onto ourselves. And we're not guided by truth. We're guided by feelings and emotions. We're by, guided by the world's consensus of opinion. We're influenced by... Um, we're influenced by, um, shall I say, fads or things that are popular, or and we we can be easily led astray. But I'm saying to you today that we need to know that Christ, first of all, Christ is our Savior and our Lord. That means He has complete control over our lives. In that, knowing that Jesus sits on our heart, that our heart continually is gravitated towards him and the father is our father he is our daddy we can cry abba father to him he's not a stranger we need to know that our lives are secure in christ that what he did on the cross is enough to seal us for eternity as we continue to focus on him we need to know that there is now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walks not after the flesh, but after the spirit. You need to know that Christ came into this world, not to condemn the world, not to condemn you, but through him that you might be saved. So you don't have to walk under condemnation and guilt. What I'm saying this morning is that we need to be secure in his blood. And we need to know that even when we have gone astray, when we said, let me do my own thing, daily we might be um, distracted by many things that appeases our flesh. And we might say, you know what? I feel good thinking this way, feeling this way, doing this thing. But deep down, we know that we're devoid of true security and love. We need to, again, come to the throne of grace. The word of God says we have not an high priest. In other words, there is, Jesus is our high priest. He came incarnate in the flesh that he may relate to us as a high priest, give himself for us, but relate to us, to our weaknesses, our infirmities, our shortcomings, our failings. Yet for him, he was without sin. Therefore, we must recognize that we can come boldly and confidently unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy 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 irrespective mercy and find help tender heartedness loving kindness and his favor to help in a time of need and this is a time of need for each and every one of us and so i want to pray this morning for every single one of you maybe you come into the first category where you haven't received Christ into your life and you need to receive Christ. Maybe you come into the second category where you've received Christ as your Lord and Savior, but you know, you know that you're not where you ought to be and that you've strayed from the faith. You've been drawn away by the lusts of the world or, or your own personal desires and ambitions. We need to rededicate our lives back to God. And so I'm going to pray in those two areas. And I really want each and every one of you, you know, um, Shanique um, shared a scripture. Uh, the day, um, what David declared, your word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. In other words, I may not miss my mark. In other words, I'm, I may not miss you, God. David continually prayed that prayer because he knew what it was felt like to be without the presence of God, feeling destitute and alone, although he knew there was a sense of awareness that God was there. But he felt empty sometimes, but he had to drive himself into the presence of God. Even as a deer panted after water, he, there was a desire and a first in him to say, you know what? I need to be where God is. And knowing that out of his belly shall flow 
that those rivers of living water that would re continually refresh him and bring him back to that place of true fellowship. We need to be there constantly every day. So I'm gonna pray that prayer and I want you all to just ask God, be true. Am I where I need to be at this moment in time? Do I have that intimate and deep relationship with God? Repent, just say, God, I'm sorry from straying from the path. I'm sorry from be, for being distracted. Just say, I'm sorry. And, and sorry is not enough to say I'm sorry, but repent means to have a change of direction in your life. Heartfelt change of direction says, I'm not going to do this anymore. You know what? I'm going to put those things behind me and I'm going to move in the opposite direction. A broken and a contrite heart. God will never despise. He never turn away. And I believe that the God, his presence is here this morning. His love is here this morning. He wants to wholly embrace us. Even when that young man, the, his son, in the, in, the, in the story of the prodigal son, when he went away and he did all that he had to do, felt that he would be fulfilled in all his actions, womanizing, drinking, um, doing all types of things. But at the end of the day, he came to a place where everything he had, he lost, he found himself in a, a pig's pen, looking to eat the food that the pigs ate until he came to a revelation. What, what am I doing here with the pigs? Even in my father's house, even if I would, have, would be a servant, I would be better off. Better I return to my father's home came to his senses and he was able to do that and you know what the father never looked at him even as he had expectation that his son would return one day he saw him afar off and he ran towards him and embraced him didn't judge him didn't condemn him said why are you smelling like a pigsty what did you do why why do you look in that state just embraced him, kissed him, and just said to him, look, we're going to have a party for you today. You know, and gave him a cloak and put a ring on his finger and just prepared for a homecoming party. Celebrated him. That's what the father does for each and every one of us. He celebrates us when we come to him. It is a celebration of his love. And he says, my son, my son and he's and <laughs> i can't even express it in words but his love embraces us to the point of wow god you are god there's no greater love we will never know the depth the width the height and the breadth of god's love it exceeds human comprehension but god is merciful i'm going to pray and uh, I just want you all to reach out and just say, God, forgive me. We all can say, God, forgive me, because we can all bring ourselves into a full sense of security to feel that, you know what, I'm all right. I don't do bad things like the world. I don't do bad things like my neighbor or whatever. I'm not like my brother or my sister. We can always compare. But from a God perspective, God wants us to be Christ-like, like his son. Jesus in every respect. And he doesn't want us to show, fall short of his glory. And so we know that we need the Father. We need his grace, we need his mercy, and we need his love. And so I'm just going to pray. And I want you to, each and every one of you, to pray and say, God, I'm sorry. I receive you in totality into my heart right now. Mm -hmm. Right now in Jesus name. Heavenly Father, I just thank you. I thank you for the word that Shanique shared this morning. So transparent, so open. Something that will resonate and has resonated in the hearts of each and every person that was in the hearing of her voice, even as you spoke through her.
And Father, I just recognize your great love that even before we was even before we was conceived in our mother's womb, you knew us. You knew our divine purpose here on earth, and you knew that it was your desire such that we would be one family in you, that we would be your child, we would be your children, we would be your sons and daughters, sons and daughters of the Most High. We know the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that though he were rich yet for our sakes, he became poor, that we for his poverty might be rich in all things, not just in wealth, money and all of, but rich in spirit, rich, rich in your love, Father. And so, Father, we come before your throne and we, we bow our hearts before you. Father, we say we're sorry, we repent of our sins, our shortcomings, our failings. Father, we repent of our stubbornness and our rebellion, our mm -hmm. mindset. Father, we repent right now. I repent right now and say, Father, melt me and mold me into your expressed image that my attitude will be that constantly of a servant as your, as your son Jesus was a servant in every respect and gave his life as a ransom for many. Father, with, I pray that I will be example of that love, that I will love you first with all my heart, knowing that all these things will be added unto me. And so, Father, I pray forgiveness of my sins. Father, we come before you, we humbly bow before you and say, we're sorry, Lord. We repent, repent. Father, this is a decision today to say the things that we have been doing, we do them no more. We make a decision, Father, not in our own strength, but by this grace and the strength and the ability of the Holy Spirit, we know that we can overcome those things. And so, Father, today we cast our cares upon you, knowing that you care for us for us father god we humbly come before you father that even now as we come before you we resist the devil we know that you truly he will flee from us and father that you will exalt us in due season at the appointed time to father to eminence and to a great call that will manifest all that you have created us mm -hmm. to be for truly we are your workmanship we are your masterpiece we are your work of heart created in christ christ jesus unto good works which beforehand you've ordained us to walk in and so father let us come to this play, point and, and place in our lives where we truly say without you we are absolutely nothing without you without loving you with all our hearts we are not all that we're supposed to be but father as we yield ourselves to you father god and as we work out our own salvation with fear and trembling, with reverence to you, Father, we are conscious that it is you that worketh in us and continue to do so, both to will and to do of your good pleasure. Let us do of your good pleasure that you will constantly please with us, please to give us all that and more that we desire so that you will be glorified through each and every one of us. Father, we thank you. Father, give us the fortitude of mind and strength to, un to undertake those things that will come against us, Father. Even the devil, Father, even at this time, he stands outside our terrain because, Father, you are dwelling our temples. Our body is the temple and the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. And he cannot, two masters cannot dwell there. And Father God, you are sovereign in my heart and you are sovereign in our hearts right now. And so, Father, we bow our hearts before you and we say, God, you are Lord of our lives. You gave your son, Jesus Christ, once and for all to die, to shed his blood, that we would be sealed for eternity. And so, Father, we declare right now that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Father, we thank you for your love this morning. I thank you for salvation. I thank you that salvation doesn't just mean I'm saved for eternity, but salvation talks about deliverance. It talks about healing, it talks about restoration. It talks about wholeness and completeness. It talks about peace. 
It talks about the joy of the Lord. It talks about all that Christ is. And so, Father, we come before you, humbly come before you and say, God, take our heart, take our lives, use us mightily for your glory. Father, confirm your word through us with signs following. Father, let us exemplify your love, the love of God, the love of God. God, you are love. And so, Father, continue to be a witness in and through us for the rest of our lives, Father. And let us know that even when we lose our path, we are lost on our path or we stray from our path, that you are forever there to steer us back, steer us back onto the right path so that we will find that peace and comfort again. So Father, we thank you. We commit everything into your hands. Father, I thank you this morning and I decree and declare salvation. I decree and declare deliverance. I decree and declare healing for the mind, the emotions, the physical body, for the spirit. Father, I decree and declare your sovereign, your sovereign rule and your sovereign will right now in the name of Jesus. Invigorate us, enlighten us, bring revelation, reveal truth to us, Father God, that we truly know who you are. That each day we wake up with a sense of urgency to press into your presence and to know that we are secure secure in your arms and secure in your love father you know what we have need of even more so than we know what we have need of and so father we put our trust in you we put our trust in you this morning and we say thank you lord thank you father thank you jesus thank you my savior thank you Yeshua, Amashia, thank you, Jehovah God, Rapha, Nisi, thank you. We bless your holy name. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. I want everybody just to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to thank God right now. Thank him. Thank your Lord and thank your Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. If you can unmute, unmute and just say thank you, Father. You're not perfect. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you. Give him honor. Jesus. Give him thank praise. You, Glorify you, his name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you Father. Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name, O Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. Thank you, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, thank Father. You, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're thank worthy. you, Lord. You're worthy, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Mm. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Um, Junior, your hand is still up. I don't know if you wanted to say something or you just haven't put it down. Okay. Just um, haven't put it down. You just haven't put it down. Praise be to God. Um, Letty. Um, your hand is up. Go ahead. Hi, everybody. Um, Chris, you were speaking earlier. Um, uh, oh gosh. Oh, I should have just interrupted you. I'm not going to remember what it was you were saying that I wanted to speak on. There was something that was really significant. Oh. Lord, bring it back to my memory. <sighs> Letty, um, if it comes back to you later, then uh, we can uh, 
you can um, express yourself. I just really, um, there's a prayer request in the um, chat and it's uh, uh, from Keith. And uh, I just want to respect the fact that he's uh, put a re prayer request in. And for anybody on the platform that has a prayer request, please, please, can you share it with us? We're here, we're brothers and sisters in Christ. We're here to support one another. Um, so um, I'm sure, as it's, it's in the, it's in the um, chat, so I'm just gonna read it. It says, I am not okay. Turmoil and constant weight is too numerous to list or engage on just longing for the Lord to expose to all I need to let go as it's not in thinking. It's in what's happening. It's not in thinking, it's in what's happening. And um, I'm just gonna um, leave it open um, for the platform. Anybody that feels led to pray, to support our prayer, support our brother in this prayer please please do so um as a, as he quite rightly said um the word of god says confess our faults one to another pray one for another that we may be healed for the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much is dynamic in all its working and there is uh, express the need for prayer and so we're here to support him. We're here to support one another. So if there's anybody that feels led to pray, please um, un unmute and just pray into that particular area. Mm. Marcia, is that you? Hallelujah. Mm. Hold on. Hallelujah. Father, we thank Praise you. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I come before you, Lord God. On behalf of our brother Keith. Jesus, 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 one who have been chosen by you. Oh God, chosen by you, oh God, under circumstances, Lord, I praise your name, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you God. have found fit to afflict Keith in different ways, Lord. Father God, it, 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 as, as to one give him a thorn in his flesh, oh God. Lord, to buffet him, Lord, for reason of the revelations that you have imparted unto him, Lord God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we praise your name, Lord God. You, Jesus. Lord, you, we Lord. praise your name, Lord, for the mysteries is upon Keith, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Father, for what you have chosen him to do, what you have called him to do, Lord God, the talent that you have given unto him is more than, Lord God, oh God, what mind can comprehend, Lord. But even so, Lord God, he is, Lord, in, in, in a state of Lord, wanting to find a way out, Lord God, wanting to have directions, oh God, Lord, I praise your name, Lord, because you are the director, Lord God. You are the one, Lord, that orders the steps, oh God. Lord, you are the one that shines revelation into the mind of the eye, Lord, and in the eye mind, oh God. Lord, enlighten, Lord God, his ways, Lord. Lord, uh, Lord he's been afflicted on every hand, oh God. Lord, there's a reason for this. Lord God, I praise your name, Lord, for Keith, Lord God. There's no one like him, Lord God. He's unique in all his ways, oh God. Lord, he is unique, Lord God. He is a unique person, oh God. 
I praise you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord, for its, its ability to endure hardness as a good soldier, Lord God. Yes, God. Thank I you, thank Jesus. you, so Lord God, for its, its ability to strive through hard times, oh God. Jesus, I thank you, Lord God. Oh, Jesus, you are so worthy, Lord God. You are worthy, Lord God. You are worthy, Lord God. You are worthy, Lord God. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are worthy, oh God. You are worthy, oh God. Oh, God, for the testimony of Keith, Lord, is deep, Lord God. Lord Jesus is, is, is wide, oh God. It's vast, oh God. Oh God, only you, Lord God, can give him such a testimony, oh God. Only you can give him such a test, oh God. And he has overcome, Lord God. And he is overcoming, oh God. Oh God, only you, Lord God, can, can give him this the codes, Lord God. The codes to unlock, Lord God, to his, his success, oh God. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, Thank you, Lord. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Only you can give him the code to unlock, oh God. Lord, the, the, his success, oh God. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh God, he wonders why others look to him, Lord God. Oh God. Lord, for, for so many things, Lord, so many prayers, Lord God, so many things that he do for people. He looks, he, 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 he wonders why the others come to him and yet he cannot find a way, Lord God. But didn't they say he heal others, but Jesus can't heal himself. He said that you save others, but you can't save yourself. Oh, God, help keep, Lord God, in this yes, time of you, trouble, you, in this time of turmoil, Thank in you, this Jesus. time of, of, you, of complex uh, in diverse uh, situations, Lord God. Only you, Lord, can unlock, oh God, uh, the coding, oh God, of his success, oh God, in you, Lord God. He moves, oh God, and have his being, oh Lord. Only you can answer prayers, oh God, on his behalf, oh God. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Lord, make everything that is confusing to him complain. Complain, oh God. Unlock the code, oh God. In Jesus' name, oh God. In Jesus Unlock name. the code, Thank you, Jesus. oh God. In the name of Unlock Jesus. the code, oh God. In Jesus' name. The, the mysteries, oh God. The mysteries, oh God. Let him find the revelation, oh God. In Jesus' name. Because things get easier. When we understand, when we have the code, oh God, he's trying to work it out, Lord. Oh God, he's trying to work it out, Lord. Oh Jesus, only you can do it, Lord God. Oh Jesus, why did Moses run away after he murdered, oh God? Oh Jesus, because you had your hands on him, oh God. You had his hands on him, Lord, and it's only in running, oh God, Lord, he was able, Lord God, to get in contact with the burning bush, oh God. Jesus, 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 the burning bush, oh God, that unlocked his code, Lord, that let him know he's not just the son of Pharaoh. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He, he, he has to go back, oh God. He has to go back, oh God. He has to go back to liberate the people, oh God. 
Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Uh, take off the shoes, oh God. Uh, take off the shoes, oh God. Because the ground uh, which he was standing on was holy ground, oh God. Uh, oh God. Uh, and you spoke to him in ways, Lord, that you didn't speak to others, uh, but he unlocked the code, oh God. And he was able to go back, oh God. Uh, and he was able to liberate the people, oh God, to free them, to exit us, oh God. I pray, Father, that Keith will find this in you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, he may feel like he's running away, Lord God, but Thank he's you, going Jesus. in the right direction, Lord God, to be spoken to, Lord God, in Jesus' name, Lord. Lord Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, thank you, Jesus. Lord. Thank you. Oh, God. Jesus. Unlock the code, oh, God. Thank oh, you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank Unlock you, the code, oh, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Marcia, thank for Jesus. interceding and standing in the gap on behalf of Keith this yes. morning. And we pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that Keith, you would feel just a, uh, an re-energized, empowered, invigorated in God and a sense of knowing that what God has promised is more than able to do. And he's doing it right now. You're in his divine will and purpose. He's doing it. Having done all to stand and stand and declare the glory and the victory of the Lord for our Savior Jesus Christ. Praise be to God. Um, I'm going to close now, but just before I close, if anybody's got anything that you want to share or just comment on in respect to what Shanice shared, Shanique shared, please do so in, in direct response to it, what Shanique shared this morning. Is there anybody, a comment or an encouragement or a reference to what she um, shared this morning? If there's anybody, um, please feel free to do so. Anybody want to share anything? Okay. If not, I'm just going to close. And um, I'm going to pray for Shanique that God will mightily, mightily use her. And I know that she has a particular um, ministry to touch those people that are infirm. And uh, when I say infirm, weak, weak, whether it be emotionally, mentally, physically. But I just pray that God will just strengthen her, the anointing that God has called her to will be refined, defined in her life that as she continues to walk in that vein. God will confirm his word through her with signs following, and that it will enlarge in her tent that she reaches out to minister to women. She has a particular call to women. And um, so I'm just gonna pray God's grace over her in Jesus name, that God will continue to use her to speak beyond this platform, that God will elevate her, that as he, as she elevates the Lord in her expression, that God will just elevate her. And even as the word says, as she humbles herself under the mighty hand of God, truly he will exhort her in due season at the appointed time. So Heavenly Father, I just thank you for Shanique. I thank you for the word that she shared this morning. It was so timely. And so Father, it, would, it spoke to each and every person this morning in one aspect or another. And Father, you have given her the capacity and the propensity, the ability 
to minister to those that are hurting, those that are vulnerable, those that are going through, and the operative words that are going through. And Father, I thank you that even through her own experience, she's able to express and articulate, Father, the needs or the sense of what other people are going through. And so, Father, I pray that you'll continue to use her mightily for your kingdom. Father, open doors of opportunity for her to speak to other and minister into the lives of other people. And Father, that even through her experiences, those experiences that she goes through, no, none of them are in vain, but only a cat serves as a catalyst to propel her into a divine purpose and destiny and so father i pray that doors of opportunity will open up to her and that father even as she goes that you will confirm your word through her with signs following and so father bring peace let her know that even in our walk father god there's so much more that you want for her and that she's invariably god you are saying to her shanik your daughter Take the limits of me. Take the limits of me. And so, Father, I pray an open heaven over her life that you pour out a blessing that she will not be able to complain, com contain. But in that blessing, having the ability to bring increase to other people's lives, Father God, you will be glorified. And so be glorified through her, I pray. And Father, I pray that revelation deeper revelation will come concerning who you are that we, she will be able to share amongst the people so father speak to her in a, a way that she you have never spoken to her before father i thank you for, for prophetic anointing that will come upon her. Prophetic anointing, I decree and declare it now. Prophetic anointing. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen and amen. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you. I would just want to um, thank each and every one of you for joining us this morning and uh, Truly, I was blessed and uh, provoked by Shanique and uh, what she shared this morning. And, uh, and I just want to just say, God, thank you for Shanique. And thank you, Shanique, because God has so, has so much more for you. And uh, so I thank God this morning. And I... Uh, Bless each and every one of you. Thank you, Key, for administrating the music. And so we're gonna we're gonna leave. Just to remind you that on Sunday, Saturday, we have the prayer clinic, and uh, from ten from eight o'clock to ten, and on Sunday we have a Sunday service from one o'clock to three thirty. So all that, if you can join us, please do. You're very much welcome. But uh, have an empowered weekend ahead of you. In Jesus' name, thank you. Bless you, each and every one of you. Be empowered.